pull some roots. Today, I have to harvest everything that is even close to being ready to harvest in preparation for leaving tomorrow morning. So all of the blushing tomatoes, any cucumbers that are big enough, any peppers that are big enough, any eggplants, you name it. We're gonna be harvesting it all to bring it to my family in Massachusetts. I'm kind of excited to see how many tomatoes we get because it looks like there are a lot out here that are blushing. You can see behind me here that these cherry tomatoes just keep on performing. Everything else is still putting on fruit and still ripening. The tomatoes have been a great year so far and it is only just beginning. Even these small determinate romas are still putting on fruit and all of these other ones will just continue growing and setting more fruit and producing more flowers and setting more fruit as the season goes on. Look at all of those tomatoes and we've already harvested so much. These guys over here just loaded with tomatoes. Thank goodness I didn't prune out all of the leaves or all of these tomatoes would have gotten sun scald. You see the leaves are protecting them. It really amazes me how much these raised beds make such a difference because a lot of people are suffering this year here in Georgia with this heat. We have had 100 degree days multiple times. We have had drought conditions in between huge downpours. It's just been very erratic conditions for these plants. But these raised beds have helped maintain a equilibrium of normalcy for these plants. Well, All right, make... let's get picking. Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Wow. Just wow, guys. I knew I was going to be able to take a couple of tomatoes to my family. I had no idea. It was gonna be this many. I feel so very blessed to be able to share this bounty with the people I love the most. And I haven't even picked these cherry tomatoes yet. They're loaded all inside of the tomato cages. They are completely full. So I'm gonna have to come back out with a bowl for these guys. It is already getting super hot today. It's a heat advisory again. So I am going to head down to the lower garden in Miss Elsie's backyard and harvest anything that needs to be harvested down there. And I'm glad that I have my harvesting apron to do that with because that box is full. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright I'm out here picking all this lovely okra that loves this heat And I just got to thinking, I bet in 10 days this one right here will probably be taller than me. <laughs> this corn is definitely taller than me now. It's all tasseling. It's all setting silk on the tops of some tiny skinny little ears. But the first one that tasseled and set an ear has already turned brown on its silk. So I've been checking using the fingernail test to see if the juices come out milky. That's when I know it's done. That's what I've been told and read anyway. And it's not quite milky yet. So. It might be the luck of Miss Elsie to be able to pick that first ear of corn that's all by itself because it started earlier than all the others. It's swelling up and fat, but you can see I've been peeling back the top to check and, and closing it back up. This one is starting to turn brown too, so she might even be lucky enough to have two ears, but I'd rather let her pick it while it's ready than pick it too early. So these guys here, there's lots of silks all throughout, and they are a little bit on the pale side, but they've been fertilized. Wow, guys, this is a pretty good amount of okra already this early in the season. The other corn, the field corn that Miss Elsie uses to make her creamed corn is really 
looking good. It's lush and green. She fertilized it and it looks like it's gonna have some that takes even though the crows got a lot of it. So the crows got all that corn in this section. We replanted and boy am I glad I did. These tomatoes are doing amazing. They're growing so much, putting on so many flowers and fruit already. And the watermelon seeds that I put out here, yeah, they definitely took most of them. Took all the way through here up until like at the end. And then there's a few throughout this row that made it, but you can see a lot of them didn't. And then as far as the pumpkin and gourds that I put in the last row, there's maybe a handful. There's like five plants that took, maybe. So not as many of those seeds germinated as I would have liked, but we got a few. So here and there. But I'm super excited about having so many watermelon that came up. Miss Elsie said she's gonna probably come through and thin it so there won't be too many where they compete with each other. Just look at the size of this bloom. That's gonna be a cat face beautiful tomato. I love cat face tomatoes. I but something about them I just absolutely adore. Just look, a little baby tomato starting. I wonder what it's gonna be like in 10 days. Man. This is it. This is how it looks before I go out of town. Let's see what it looks like in 10 days. Oh, you and I, we got it. Oh, What an abundant harvest this has been. I am so blessed. All right, so we have everything picked and harvested except for the cherry tomatoes, but it has reached too high of a heat level out here for me. I'm going in to cool off, and this evening when the sun goes down, I can come back out and pick these cherry tomatoes. But for now, it's goodbye. We'll see you soon, but there will be a little lull in videos. I'm going to try to space them out so that it's more like four days apart instead of two so that you have enough content to keep you busy while we're gone. All of our videos are shot a week in advance and scheduled to publish later in the week. So by the time you watch this, we'll already be home. Goodbye for now, my sweet garden. I will miss you, but I will rejoice in embracing you again when I return and I will be ready to spoil you and protect you and love you.